sometimes I just can't help myself. You know, every but so blue moon and orange too. I have to address the girls. I have to clock the girls. I have to read the girls. So I made sure that I put out my best clergy look. Because I have to read the girls for the gods of Gideon, the gods of Israel, the gods of Persia, the gods of China, the gods of every bit of continent and around back to my city, which is L.A. I have to read the girls. Now, you know, YouTube is a place where people can freely express themselves and talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. You know, we get that. But sometimes, as being people that have this podium, you have to reach out and touch sometimes. So, I recently did a video in regards to um, the Pass Out Challenge. And with that, girl, I attracted so many views and people comments and just saying all kind of things. But you know how sometimes you have a bunch of worms that like to slither and slide and shake their way into your videos. And they leave all kind of nasty comments. I mean, they're just so nasty and so rude. I mean, they're literally just so nasty and so rude. I mean, I have to just sit back and just wonder what kind of people are these? Like, where do you live? Under a rock? Have you not seen a gay man before? Have you not seen te television? I mean, where do you, where do you live? Dusseldorf? I mean, clearly. We're in 2014 and you're surprised that a gay man has a voice like this on YouTube and you like to reach out, but I'm not talking to them. I have one girl that I want to address. She left the paragraph so I'll give her a read, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and address what this Miss Girl said and I'm going to just go ahead and just say my piece. Is that, it's only fair, right? So anyway, I had a young lady by the name of, I'm going to give her um, the best benefit of the doubt because I cannot say the names right. Vanessa Loray, Lorette, but I'll just say Loray, it sounds better. Anyway, so Vanessa says, and you can even picture the see this coming for your own, for yourself on my last video, which is, um, the Pass Out Challenge. So Vanessa says, well, to be honest, I also find you a bit strange. Strange considering your appearance and demeanor was that of a woman What's wrong with you being the original person God intended you to be? I got her. Don't, don't, I, I got it. Were you ashamed? I'm just curious. You shouldn't change yourself to meet someone's standards just because you don't feel like you belong or they don't approve of who you are. If God wanted you to be a woman, he would have made you to be. Everything's happened for a purpose. Just accept it. That's what life's all about. Embrace yourself for who God made you to be. This is also a predicament troubling this generation. From this statement and this comment, I believe that she's the PR and HR for all of the people in the Christian church. And I think that she also has God's right ear in her purse. So clearly she's speaking for God, whichever God she serves. So let me go ahead and address my piece. So I'm going to go ahead and break this on down. Well, to be honest, I found you a bit quite strange considering your appearance and demeanor was that of a woman. What's wrong with you being your original self, original person God intended you to be? I always find that so funny. And I really want to address this to the girls because I really feel like the girls don't know what they're talking about. And what I find to be so funny is that how people like to put their religious beliefs on top of everything that they want to say out their mouth to justify what it is that they're saying. See, sweetie, that one thing that I know that you don't know is that God said this. My ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So the things that you're thinking about, God is not even thinking of, sweetheart. So who are you to be his HR department, his PR department, or better yet, his podium speaker? Because you clearly are speaking for God. You're speaking for flesh and you're speaking from self and you're speaking out, out of ignorance. That's what you're speaking out of. Girlfriend. You know what I find to be quite funny? I'm going to just give you a little bit more of a personal insight about me. When people ask me what's my religion, I say I don't have one because I don't. I have more of a spiritual relationship with God. I'm more about the spirit and the inner man. I could care less about you being Buddhist, you being Baptist, you being a Wiccan, you being whatever it is that you are because I feel that all humans have one thing in common. It's about love. 
Now, I believe that she asked me this question out of ignorance. So I'm going to shed some light onto her so that she can better address maybe her children, her son, her daughter, who may be struggling with who they are in the near future or whatever it is they might go through. Or maybe she may know of someone that may be struggling and she may not know how to address this person. So I'm going to shed some light to Miss Vanessa so that she can kind of understand what it is that who I am and what it is this lifestyle is all about. So, you posed the question to me, why not be who God intended you to be? I never thought I was faking to be someone else. Because clearly, when I get up like this, and when I dress like this, I am being honest in who I am. No false pretenses, no games, no stunts, no shows. This is who I am. I dress like myself. And yes, I may have a feminine voice and I may sound like a woman. And I may even wear woman's attire, which I look so good in. Yes, Rachel Zoe Collection. Thank you. Hello. But at the end of the day, I am so... So thankful for what God gave me from the back to the front, every inch of what God gave me. And yes, he's given me inches, honey. Yes. So everything that he has given me, I love. And I would never, ever change anything about myself. Your appearance and demeanor was that of a woman. What's wrong with being the original person God intended you to be where you were ashamed? Ashamed of what? Ashamed? To be what? Because if I was ashamed, I wouldn't be wearing this attire. If I was ashamed, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't speak like this. I wouldn't talk the way I talk. If I was ashamed, I would be wearing a Steve Harvey suit and going to someone's church on a Sunday and I would be lustering after the pastor's son and lustering after every man in the choir because I am denying myself of who I am. That is what being in denial is all about. That is being who God did not intend for you to be. See, people... In this life, the best quote that I can give you is to know thyself. You have to know thyself so that when people come at you with their religious beliefs, because like I said before, I don't do religion. I do spirituality. I'm all about the inner man. I'm all about the having that direct connection to God, about knowing who I am. Because once you know who you are, then you begin to know who God is. And when I said that I feel like I don't fit in with this society and I don't fit in with this generation, I said that from a thought process and how people these days are not using their common sense because you have people out here that are setting themselves on fire, that are drinking bleach, that are jumping off of buildings, that are doing all kind of weird and strange things. And these people are not even professional at being stunt devils. They're just doing this to get a kick and to get popular off of YouTube for being idiots and fools. That is why I feel like I don't fit in because you have so many people that think this is the cool thing to do by doing dumb, stupid, ridiculous challenges that will eventually bring harm to your body. I don't do that. I don't need to do that. I don't need to set myself on fire. Hell is hot. I don't want to go there. So why would I set myself on fire? Why would I do that? Why would I want to make myself pass out? But everyone else is out here doing it. So now I feel like I'm crazy because everybody else is out here passing themselves out. And the only thing I want to be knocked out is in, in the spirit. I don't want to be knocked out because some hope pushing on my chest. That's just crazy to me. I clearly thought the Bible said that my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. So how is it that with your small-minded ways, you're able to think like God? I'm confused. Who are you again? Your name is not David. Your name is not Paul. Your name is not any of those disciples that he carried around with him for 12 months or whatever he, the 12 disciples. He, you're, you're none of those people. So what are you talking about? See, the thing about religion, that's why I don't do religion, is because it makes people so small-minded. However, one thing that we all can touch and agree on as being human beings is the, is the emotion to love. If you love somebody, you accept them for all of who they are. And you may not love every single thing about this person, but you won't be ignorant enough to address them in the wrong way. What you'll do is you'll love them throughout whatever it is that they're going through. If more people will use a love approach rather than react out of fear, which leads to insecurities, which leads to hate, which leads to all type of other things that relate from the word fear, this world would be a much better place. I am 100% comfortable in who I am. I love everything about myself. I love my uniqueness. I love everything about the skin I'm in. Who are you again?